Hello, this is Matt Glafke with your Ash Wednesday Lenten reflection at the very beginning of our journey here. Uh, I sit this morning uh, right in front of uh, historic St. James Chapel where missionaries uh, first brought the word and Jesus uh, to these people in Wisconsin where I uh, now reside for the time being. Uh, and so in honor of, uh, of this missionary place, I just set forth this journey uh, on our hearts this Lent. So let me begin uh, with the reading uh, from Genesis, in which the Lord says to the man after uh, Adam and Eve have sinned. And the Lord says to the man, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat its yield all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bear for you, and you shall eat the grass of the field. By the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread, until you return to the ground from which you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So this Ash Wednesday will be marked with ashes uh, as a symbol of that which we were created from, from dust, and for dust we will return. And this is, this is a simple reminder uh, for me that, uh, that the Lord God created all of us. He created us from something so simple as dust. Uh, and yet here we are uh, serving him or our desire to serve him. And that's what I ask of us this Lenten journey. As we think about from dust we come and from dust we shall return, momentum mori, something that checks on us how, how short this life span that we live here is even if our span be 80, 90 years, if we're lucky, or less than that. Um, but in reflecting on that, how are we living? Are we living for the Lord, or are we subtly working against, uh, against Jesus in the ways that we act, in the ways that we talk, in the ways that we live out our lives? And so, as we plan out what we are to, to do for this Lent, I ask you, um, Rather than it being, what are you sacrificing? Really, how do you desire to grow in holiness? So many are always asking the question, what are you giving up for Lent? And I said, well, I want to, I want to grow in holiness for the Lord. And so in that way, um, am I treating my body as a temple of the Holy Spirit? Am I putting in it things that will allow me to fully worship the Lord? And so if I'm not, that's something that I can give up but giving up so that I might grow in, in my ability to love God more? Should I give up things such as movies or music that are not adding to my ability to listen to the Lord in my life? Do I do things such as not maintain my body in a good standing by eating lots of chips or simply lazing around rather than eating good and healthy foods, right? Or taking walks or runs or... or working out so that my body might be able to maintain its best shape in terms of being a temple of the Holy Spirit. So I'm asking you and myself, can I build a habit for this Lent that better reflects that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? So when we tell others what we're doing, can we tell them why? Can I tell them why I desire to pray so much in adoration right here? Can I tell them why I might be fasting from something? Not simply, what am I sacrificing, but what am I gaining? And this is not simply to boast in our own strength, but always, always, always to point to Jesus Christ who suffered here on earth for us. He ultimately suffered a trial of all things that he was innocent of and all charges that, that were made up, trumped up. Right? And he suffered a death that he didn't deserve, but for the love of us, he laid down his life. So now I'm going to read a small passage from, from Colossians. <clears throat> and we think, we think about who St. Paul was and, and what he asked uh, of others as he, as he wrote these letters around uh, to the various peoples around the world that he desired to stay in contact with. And in Colossians chapter 3, he talks about the mystical death and resurrection. Paul writes, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. So I ask, what are we doing to think about what is above? 
How can we reflect upon how our, we live our lives today that are pointing to something above? And so he says, Put then to death the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. <clears throat> but now that you must put them away, put on something as God's chosen ones, holy and blessed. So he's asking us now to put something on. That's so much better than those things. Heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against one another as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you are also called in one body. So this Lent as we reflect on what we are to gain in holiness, as we reflect on what we are to leave behind these things of the earth. How will you grow in holiness? What is the task that God is calling you to take up this Lent, to better reflect His Holy Spirit in you, in body, soul, spirit, and mind? And how do you desire to respond in joy and the very gift of life that He has given us? We all desire to return to the Lord with our whole hearts, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And so I invite you, to return to the Lord this Lenten journey and to bask in the glory of what that will look like once Easter comes back and he's fully present to us again. May God bless you always.